Hey Josh here, and sorry for the lull in videos again. I have uh, somewhat o overestimated myself, and I haven't really made a whole lot of videos. But I, like I said last time, it's mainly because I am in university, and I just got a crap load of stuff to do. This weekend alone, I had to do a full essay and read three whole goddamn books. So don't go leave any comments for it, please. <laughs> anyway, getting a hand, I do have quite a bit to say about this. Uh, it's a uh, this is I'm talking about the movie Pontypool this or today, and uh, if you don't know what this is, it's a Canadian horror movie by Bruce McDonald, who also did the Tracy Fragments, and uh, well, that movie wasn't to my liking, amazingly so. I do did quite enjoy Pontypool actually. I uh, I um, I find it very intriguing. Uh, to quickly sum up the plot, it's about it's it's a horror movie, a zombie movie to be more specific, but it has a twist. The virus is spread not through some kind of blood, but through language, specifically the English language, and only through specific words, and there's even more twists to it than that. And uh, it's a fascinating concept, and as outlandish as it is, if you're already going to accept zombies, you might as well accept this, and it really does give you a really interesting and original thrill ride because of it. Now, having said that, this is not particularly an action movie, I would more so call it a drama. It's only until the last half hour when zombies physically, well, zombies, quote unquote, physically make their appearance. Uh, Bruce McDonald called the zombies conversationalists, and uh, a bit of an odd name, but it's, yeah, anyway. They, uh, the disease works in three stages. You find a word, one of, presumably an infected word, and you get stuck on that word, continually repeating it, repeating it, as if it's a revelation, you can't wrap your mind around it. Second stage, you begin, your words get scrambled, and so similar words go in place, like the simple sample guy was good, and things like that, where it's just very odd and all the same, a lot of alliteration. And the third stage is finally you, the infected person becomes so enraged that you feel the only way you can escape from it is by chewing through another person's mouth, which is pretty grotesque. And uh, you do see some of this stuff in the movie, and it's, like I said, it's quite grotesque. But if anyone has seen 28 Days Later, which if you haven't, you should get to see it right now and stop this video and watch it later. But if you haven't seen it, uh, or have seen it, anyone remembers that scene where the main character is having a story related to him by another with very vague sound effects in the ba background about horrific incidents. Uh, this is what a lot of the movie is comprised from. This is an independent movie and uh, clearly was made on a very small budget. While it does look good and the sound design is excellent, it is on a very limited scope despite, uh, despite the events portrayed. It focuses on three main characters, possibly four if you count another, but I'm just going to say three main characters in a radio station, a DJ, a DJ shock jockey who has come to work in this little shit town of Pontypool from his previous job, uh, his boss and his assistant. And they slowly reports start to come in of uh, weird happenings, like people being described as a herd running other people over and randomly chanting things while assaulting a building. And it's and it actually is quite frightening because, like I said, you don't get to see a lot of the stuff. And while it is at once infuriated because you do want to see some of this stuff, it's really kind of chilling without it. Uh, Stephen McCaddy is the main actor in this, plays the shock jockey, and. A lot of the time, I, you gotta really gotta give this guy credit, is a one-man show, basically. Because the majority of the time, it is just you listening to audio recordings or uh, reporters out on the field of these incidents. And uh, the screen is taken up solely by his facial expressions. And when you can carry a movie on your facial expressions, you are officially a goddamn freaking awesome actor. And, uh, and if anyone's wondering, Steve McCaddy was also uh, the Night Owl 1 in, in the recent Watchmen movie. And this odd connection I noticed myself only a little while ago. But, uh, anyway, getting back to the plot at hand. It's a, like I said, it's a fascinating plot. It is a horror movie, don't get me wrong, but, uh, equal portions. It is a ah, linguistic study and how we as a race communicate. And, uh, while that does sound a little pretentious, the pretension's actually appreciated. Because, you know what, smart horror movies don't come along all that often. And this is definitely one I would deem as a smart horror movie. And uh, bits of Canadiana surface because of its Canadian roots, and as well as twinges of black humor, which sometimes seem out of place and sometimes work perfectly fine. Either uh, Going back to Canadiana, I just want to say it's actually pretty amusing. 
to uh, hear about separatist movements and what and all and whatnot, and especially his introduction, where he's talking on the radio about how his uh, how the how the day is, and I uh, quote, the cold blistering shivering blow your brains out morning which is adequately describing a lot of Canadian winter mornings I can say for a fact out of experience that is about what you feel like but uh, anyway I realize I'm gushing and really not going a particular way in this movie but like I said I just have trouble organizing my thoughts because this movie does have even not necessarily a lot to say but there's a lot to say about it uh, just the characters in general are well acted, like I've said before, Stephen McHattie is great here. Uh, Anna Ferris is his assistant, who does a decent job, she doesn't embarrass herself, don't get me wrong, she's not bad. She, uh, well, for lack of not spoiling anything, she does what she does quite well, and in particular, her, the latter half of the movie, she is quite good in that. I cannot recall the actress's name who played the radio station's boss, but she did a decent job. I'm sorry, I'll insert it in the video right now. But uh, she did a decent job. This is definitely a role for Stephen McHattie. Uh, going back to this, I'm sorry, I just keep having to come back to this because this is such a fascinating original concept. I went into the theater not really knowing what to expect in this movie, and uh, the linguistic aspect of it, of this disease spread through language, and it's like a malignance. You fairly early on learn, early on is in 40 minutes, about what the disease is all about if you're listening. It's not going to spoon feed it to you, but you can get pretty much gather what it is. And uh, it really adds a whole new dynamic to the horror, because even more so, isn't I can compare it much the same way at 28 Days Later, speaking of, uh, brought in the fast zombie, where but the zombie before would be shambling and uh, and you could basically everyone would be they would, they would mock worthy because you could just walk away from them most of the time, but uh, the infected could run at you and quite rightly the conversationalists uh, are not only deadly into themselves and that they can both run and they're terrifying in that, but also the disease is abundant. It's not like the conversationalists need to actually get you to infect you. It's random words that you say. It could be anything. You could be hiding and you could be infected all of a sudden. And it's a, truly a, a chilling idea for a movie, I think, and fascinating. I actually, uh, the original book by Tony Burgess, if I'm pronouncing that right, a uh, book has just recently released. Not a whole lot of copies, but I made sure to go out and get it. Haven't been able to read it yet. Probably won't be able to until around uh, mid-April, but expect a review on that, too. Um... I just want to move on to uh, the effects, well, finally, before this, before my time's up, I realize I'm running eight minutes now. And uh, the effects, like I said, this is generally a movie situated in one location with about four or five rooms, but all the same, the effects do come into play later in the movie, alongside with the physical effects, that is, and uh, they're quite gruesome, I must say. Not in an exploitive way, but in a, much like the rest of the movie, a rather creepy way. Mm, sound effects, like I said before, sound design is excellent. Any uh, calls you get really have a sense of uh, of place to them. Like if you get in some other area, you get that kind of radio jitter and same thing on the TV. And I realize the movie's probably not made for a whole lot, but it uh, a lot of the money clearly went to this, and rightfully so. Uh, just last thing I wanted to mention before I'm out. If you like horror movies, and if you like zombie movies, then you know what, this is definitely something, even if the premise doesn't sound, isn't immediately fasting to you like it was me, then uh, this, this is still definitely something different, and quite original, and uh, not quite as fast paced as other movies, and uh, quite a bit of weirdness, especially the very end after the credits, check that out. But uh, even throughout the movie, it's a very oddball movie. But I, uh, regardless, you should check this out. It's a really great movie. Uh, you're easily a contender for my favorite of the year, even just for the sheer concept and uh, and uh, audacity in the in the design of it. I really appreciate this, and I feel it's not going to be in theaters for long, but I'm sure it's going to come out on video. Catch it online if you must. But either way, this is something horror fans should take note of.